It's music of Duke Ellington, and he's been very influential on American music. And it's his 100th birthday, April 29th. So we're uh, exploring it, improvising on it, and trying to recreate it. I think there's a lot to learn from the voicings, uh, the colors, and everybody knows he was a painter. And you can hear that in the music. point out that this is actually the actual jacket that belonged to Duke Ellington and was worn by him on uh, on the record record cover of Ellington 38. This jacket right here, I found it in a trash can, but this was the, the actual jacket. I believe you. And that's what he said. So we're doing it with a scaled down version and we're learning how to get that sound with a small ensemble, still have the polyphony. Ellington loved New Orleans polyphony. And, uh, we try to use a little of that too. It's kind of kind of jazz, isn't it? <laughs> It's called a shove it. It really is. It's a sack swab. It so it keeps the pads from drying out. And, um, no, from getting too wet. That's it. Don't look. That's it. That's all I know about that. Well, the Duke was a master because he, way beyond anybody else, way before anybody else, took time, took music, took rhythm, and, 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 and gave it a cohesion that no one before or since gave. I mean, Mingus took things out, but Mingus acknowledged a big debt to, to Ellington because of the way he could orchestrate things and score things. He could, he could hear stuff that other people just didn't hear. else like it. See me Any musician will tell you, when it all clicks on all the cylinders, it's better than sex, it's better than drugs, it's better than any of that. When it doesn't click, it, uh, it's kind of like jumping in front of a train. <laughs> That's okay.